Father John Smith was regarded as the perfect priest. It was shocking when, in his final months, the Catholic Church itself removed him. A lawyer who once represented Father Smith calls allegations of sex abuse absurd, a money grab. Yet none of the accusers have yet filed suit. Tonight, for the first time, you'll hear from two accusers. Their stories are graphic. To do this story right, we need to have a sense of what he did. It was the longest breath of silence in his first ever interview. It was both oral and penetration. Um, the most sick part of everything. He was all of 12 years old. And it made me not want to eat anything for like the next two days. I just kept just rinsing my mouth. I would just brush my teeth like. We'll call alleged victim one Matt, even today. There's some days where I'm brushing my teeth like 10 times a day. Like you can't get your mouth clean. Like I can't, yeah. Oh, uh, well. We'll call alleged victim two Mark. He sit me on his lap and pull my pants down. Their stories are strikingly similar, yet they've never met and don't know each other exists. They're both speaking of Chicago's beloved Father Smith. He just lived and breathed to help people. Who died in April to accolades. We are so proud of the man we know as our friend and brother. God bless Father John Smith and God bless the legacy of Maryville Academy. And the children that come here uh, really, really blossom. And That's Father John Smith. He still stands tall today. This commissioned by Maryville Academy, tossing a child skyward made of bronze. It will live as long as the scars. Alleged victims independently say they were rewarded. She was furloughed to go home. When I went home uh, on the weekend, it was blood in my stool. Emotional. <laughs> Mark said he told his alcoholic parents who didn't care from his DCFS records he just obtained from that very time frame. It says he recently informed his parents of his homosexuality. He was 12 in a Catholic home for kids placed there by the state and no one wondered. I was crying out. It was like they was protecting, like Father Smith. After it happened, I mean, I was, I was able to go back home on the weekend. It's a privilege you hadn't had prior to him doing that. That was the exchange, yeah. After the second time that it happened, I did say something to a staff member. So you're saying as a 12-year-old, you were sexually assaulted and you told a staff member there and they blew you off? <sighs> That's, it, you sound surprised by that. CBS 2 obtained this memo on yet a third alleged Father Smith victim. He too, it says, reported it to Maryville. The response, that's crazy. My name is Janine Stevens. I represent uh, several men who have been abused by uh, Father John Smith. Attorney Janine Stevens represents a half dozen alleged Smith victims. Are there more potential victims that are out there that have reached out to you, but that won't come forward still out of fear? Absolutely. Yes. Do you have a number? I would uh, estimate I've received phone calls from 30 people. 30? 30. 30, yes. You know, but he was larger than life. He would talk about what a, you know, his, his basketball career at Nor Notre Dame and how he had this offer to play in the NBA and he turned it down. And what was his M.O.? His M.O. was he would go, he mostly went after kids who were basketball players. Basketball, and I was pretty good. Of the alleged victims you represent, how many are African American? All but one. Did it seem like he gave more of his attention to young black men? Yes. Maryville's population, made up largely of wards of the state from Chicago south and west side. At Maryville. Smith started at Maryville in 1962, was eventually superintendent until its residential program was shut down in 2003. I don't know if you have copies of those. No, this has never been provided to me. We 
obtained these privileged and confidential memos outlining alleged abuse. It started with two allegations in March of 2018. The Archdiocese alerted DCFS and the Cook County State's Attorney of one of those the next day. Some 10 months later, the Archdiocese removed Father Smith from ministry. Then, seven more victims came forward. Total alleged victim count, nine before Father Smith died. It's believed all nine were DCFS kids. In March of 2018, DCFS knew of at least one alleged Father Smith victim, but as Smith ailed, DCFS failed. It took 10 months to finally begin a 60-day investigation. Today, that's more than two months late and counting. Why did it take them so long to investigate the allegations against him? I thought I was going to a better place when I went to Maryville. Mark's life has included a suicide attempt. He's now married. It's like I'm living a double life. <laughs> but he cheats on his wife with other men. He can't control it. Both men are now going to counseling paid for by the diocese. For victim one, Matt, after it first happened with Father Smith. And then it happened again. And it happened again. And, and I think it would have continued to happen if Maryville was never closed. I was there all the way until the last day of it being opened. Do you wish you would be alive now so he would have to answer? Oh, absolutely. As for the Archdiocese, they said they stopped their investigation when DCFS launched their investigation. Why? We had questions, but Cardinal Blaise Supich declined our request for a sit-down interview. We have much more at CBSChicago.com, including coverage of Father Smith's funeral, some of his adamant supporters, and how the Des Plaines Police Department is trying to investigate, but have yet to get a full alleged victim list.